to I didn't press record when I did my intro with all the boxed manga it's all unboxed now and there's no intro so we're just gonna do the intro now <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today I'm filming a long-awaited video. I finally found some time to haul and unbox the manga I bought in my $500 shopping spree back in May. I'm hauling a few other manga as well, but hey, the more the merrier. <laughs> in the first part of this video, I'll be unboxing all the manga, and in the second part, I'll be giving some details on each series. There's a bunch of timestamps available, so feel free to jump around. And with that, I invite you to grab a tea or other beverage of your choice, and let's unbox manga. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed the unboxing portion of this video, and without skipping a beat, let's haul some manga. The first manga I'm hauling today is Volume 1 of the shoujo series Starcrossed by Junko, or Junko. When I first bought this, I thought it was a rom-com story about an idol and a fangirl that swap bodies when they kiss, but I was wrong, or at least I was partially wrong, maybe? I don't know, <laughs> but I've since learned that this is actually about two characters that end up dying. They go to heaven and are granted a second chance at life, but then they're accidentally resurrected in the wrong bodies. That sounds so much more interesting. <laughs> it's rated 16 plus. I don't know if that's because it gets a little steamy or if it's because of the supernatural stuff. This Kodansha publication has excellent reviews. Quite a few people say it's really funny and everybody agrees that the art is super cute. I love the art style. I've ordered volumes 2 and 3 and will be waiting to read this until those volumes have arrived. This second book is a one-off Yuri manga and it's I Married My Best Friend to Shut My Parents Up story and art by Kodama Naoko. The title explains the pop explains the plot of this Seven Seas publication perfectly. It's about a girl whose parents keep harping her to get married, so she marries her best friend in the hopes that her parents will leave her alone. I bought this because I'm a huge fan of the fake marriage, fake relationship trope in where the characters eventually catch feelings for each other. The art looks really pretty, it sounds very sweet, and I'm eager to add another Yuri story to my collection. I've talked about this next series in my last three videos, so I'm just going to mention it very briefly. This is volume one of Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. It's great, it's creepy, it's scary, we love it. Moving on. <laughs> I'm very excited to haul and read these next couple manga. And that's volumes 5 through 7 of the Kodansha series, Perfect World by Rai Aruga. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> this moving and thought-inducing romantic drama follows the struggles and triumphs in love between a non-disabled woman and a man in a wheelchair. It's completed in Japanese at 12 volumes, with 7 available in English. I binged the first four volumes of this series earlier this month, and the storyline is just a roller coaster of emotions. I haven't cried yet, but I've teared up many times. <laughs> Volume four ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, so I just said screw it, and I ordered all the way up to volume seven. I didn't really have many expectations going into Perfect World but so far I think it's a really solid Jose series. Up next is a manga I sort of purchased on a whim, and that's volume one of the Seinen series. JK Haru is a sex worker in another world. Story by Ko Hiratori and art by Jeta Yamada. Now I'm surprised that I'm so drawn to this manga because it's a fantasy, fan service manga, but the synopsis really sold me, so I'm going to read it for you. Haru Koyama was an ordinary student until her moron classmate got them both in a terrible accident. Now Haru has been transported to another world, where only men are allowed to be adventurers. Rude. Determined to make the most of it, she takes a job in the blue cat nocturine brothel to make a living the only way she knows how. No cheat abilities, no powers, just her quick wits and naughty bits. Sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> I'm curious to see if Haru like blackmails her clients or if she works her way up the chain and gets a sugar daddy that protects her, but she's like secretly manipulating him or something. Is this gritty? Is this romantic? I don't know. <laughs> this could go in so many different directions and I am very intrigued. The next manga I'm hauling is Volume 2 of the Jose series, Life Lessons with Uramichi Omison by Gaku Kuze. Ever since my son picked this out and gifted me the first volume for Mother's Day, I've been very keen on reading the series. I decided to be patient 
and I ordered the second volume and now that it's unboxed I plan on binging volumes one and two soon. This slice of life dark comedy is about 31 year old Uramichi, the host of a children's TV show. He leads the physical exercises on the show and teaches life lessons that share the same main theme. Adulthood sucks. <laughs> Uramichi is like the stark opposite of Steve from Blue's Clues. He hates his career and grows more miserable with each passing day. I've seen people comment that this is really funny. It's also really relatable. Like there's a little bit of Urumichi in all of us. It's rated 16 plus, probably because of the blunt dark humor. I'm intrigued at the concept of a character having to force an energetic and cheerful facade for a kids TV show. All I can think about is how many of these hosts deal with these same feelings of anxiety and depression at their jobs in real life. Like, there's no way all those performers on the Wiggles are excited to come to work. I bet there's at least one of them that hates their job, and I'm excited to explore that idea through this manga. <laughs> This next manga is one I know very little about, but I have like a really good feeling about it. And that's volume one of the Shonen series, A School Frozen in Time, story by Mizuki Sujimura and art by Naoshi Arakawa. Published by Vertical Comics, this psychological horror follows a group of kids who become trapped in their school with time being frozen right at the moment their classmate committed suicide three months earlier. The premise for this sounds very trippy and strange. It's rated 16 plus, probably because it deals with those darker themes. I've ordered up to volume four, so I'm going to wait to read this series until I have those other volumes. I have a feeling this is going to be a very mysterious and addictive story. Another one shot I'm hauling today is the Yen Press title, Secretly I've Been Suffering About Being Sexless by Togami. This Jose slice of life drama tells a story about a woman who is struggling in a sexless marriage. This is actually a semi-autobiographical manga about Togami Sensei's own experiences in her own marriage. And because I enjoyed uh, my lesbian experience with loneliness so much, I thought I'd try another autobiographical manga by a different mangaka. The reviews for this are mixed, but I like manga centering around adult relationships and it's only a one shot, so there's no big commitment if I don't enjoy it. This next set of books are part of a Yuri series that I haven't started yet, but I've heard really good reviews about, and that's volumes two and three of the Viz Media publication, A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow, story and art by Makoto Hagano. This slice of life story follows Konatsu, a shy, quiet girl who recently moved from Tokyo to a small seaside village due to her father's new job overseas. At her first day of school, Konatsu discovers the Aquarium Club and meets its sole club member, Koyuki. Konatsu is drawn to Koyuki and has decided to try and overcome her introverted tendencies to try and get close to her. This is supposed to be a really cute and really sweet story. The series is completed at nine volumes, but I think there's only seven available in English at the moment. I did end up ordering the rest of the series. I admit I'm a terrible role model when it comes to buying and collecting manga, but the reviews for this are just so good. And I love the concept of these girls bonding over an aquarium club. <laughs> I purchased these next manga after hearing Marguerite's manga recommend the series on her channel, and that's volumes 2 through 4 of the shoujo title Short Cake Cake by Sue Morishita. I've heard this story gets better after the first couple volumes, so I bought up to volume 4. If it's not good by the end of volume 4, 
I'll probably pass on collecting the rest of the series. This reverse harem romance is about a girl named Ten who moves into the local boarding house so she doesn't have to commute as far to get to school. One of her friends is already living in the house along with three other boys. The narrative follows Ten while she lives in this boarding house and chronicles the friendships and relationships she makes there. I'm excited for this series for a couple reasons. Not only are the reviews for this really good, but the art is beautiful. And it was written by mangaka Morishida Sensei, who wrote A Sign of Affection. I love that manga. <laughs> the series is completed at 12 volumes, and everything is released in English, so if I enjoy these first four books, I'll be adding the rest to my wish list. Up next is a manga I'm literally collecting just so I don't fall behind, and that's volume 14 of the Shonen series, The Ancient Magus Bride by Kori Yamazaki. I seriously need to catch up reading this series because I shouldn't be buying these volumes if it's something that I'm no longer interested in reading. This Seven Seas publication is about a girl named Chise, and Chise sells herself at an auction house because she's alone in the world and wants a place to call home. She's purchased by a powerful magic caster, a demon named Elias, who's decided to take Chise on as an apprentice and his future bride. The first arc of this series was amazing. I loved it but I'm having a really hard time connecting to the second story arc. I don't care for the new plot or the characters, and I found Elias, my favorite character, was taking a back seat in the narrative. I think I'm going to make it a personal goal to get caught up within the next couple months and make the ultimate decision of either continuing or dropping the series. The next volume I'm hauling is volume 6 of the seinen comedy The Way of the Husband by Kosuke Ona. This episodic series follows Tatsu, a retired Yakuza boss who has left the life of crime to become a house husband. I've read the first three volumes of this series and describing it as hilarious is an understatement. <laughs> I just love the dedication and intensity Tatsu puts into all his chores and his housework. The manga has made me laugh like no other and is well deserving of the Eisner Award it won in 2020 for Best Humor Publication. These volumes are pretty quick reads, so I'm thankful I've saved up a few to binge. And now I'm going to talk about a series that I kind of regret buying, but I'm trying to be optimistic. And that's volumes 1 through 8 of the Kodansha series LDK by AU Wanot to be. I don't think I'm pronouncing their name right. <laughs> this shoujo narrative is about two high schoolers, Aoi, Aoi, and Shusei, <laughs> who after a series of crazy events end up living in the same apartment together. Shusei is known at school to be heartless and cold and Aoi doesn't particularly like him because he rejected her friend. Nevertheless, Aoi recognizes that her heart races whenever Shusei is around. One of the reasons that I bought this was because I thought it was smutty and I think it is eventually. It's rated 16 plus so that's a good sign but I've read that the romance is a very slow burn and I'm not a fan of slow romances. There's 24 volumes in this series with 16 released in English and I'm just worried the romance is going to take forever to heat up. If you've read this series, what are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comment section below. This next manga is another Kodansha shoujo series, and that's volume one of Those Not So Sweet Boys by Yoko Nohiri. If I remember correctly, this manga is about 
a girl facing expulsion because she has a part-time job and that's against school policy. The chairman of the school board gives her a task to avoid being expelled. She needs to bring these three boys back to school. I've heard people mention that this reverse harem romance reminds them of Waiting for Spring, and I actually really enjoyed that series, so I want to try this one. It's rated 13+, plus, so I expect it to be pretty tame. I have volumes 2 through 4 boxed up somewhere, so I'm going to wait to read this until those volumes are unboxed. This next book is another one-shot. It's published by Vertical Comics, and that's... A Girl on the Shore by In Inio Asano. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what this is about, but I think it's a dark romance. It's rated 17 plus, so I expect some mature themes. My favorite. <laughs> I'm going to keep myself in the dark with this one. I have a lot of fun reading manga I know nothing about. <laughs> Now, the manga My Boy by Hitomi Takano has been recommended to me by multiple people. I've heard people say this vertical publication reminds them of After the Rain, and if you didn't know, that's one of my favorite series I've read this year. It's about a 30-year-old woman and a 12-year-old boy who are both burdened with loneliness and form a platonic relationship. At least, I think think it's platonic. It's rated 14 plus, so I don't think this is an age gap romance or anything like that. The Seinen series is completed at 9 volumes, but there's 7 released in English. I decided to buy all 7, you know, go big or go home. I will be hauling the rest of the series in a future haul. The book I'm hauling next is one I unboxed off screen, and that's only because I couldn't wait to read it, and that's volume 7 of the Kodansha rom-com Living Room Matsunaga-san by Keiko Iwashita. For those that don't know, this is an age gap romance between two characters living in a boarding house with four other tenants. It's one of my favorite shoujo manga of all time and I'm loving this series more with every volume. I absolutely adore Jun. I have the biggest crush on him, and the sparks between him and Miko, I just love it so much. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this series and will be sharing a spoiler-free review of this volume in my upcoming monthly wrap-up. The next few manga I'm hauling are volumes 7 through 9 of Sweat and Soap by Kintetsu Yamada. I couldn't help but include these books in this video because I want to read them right away. <laughs> if you're new here, this seinen series is a 5 star manga for me and I'm thrilled to read these books. Sweat and Soap is a refreshing story following two young adults in a mature relationship. One just happens to have perspiration problems, and the other has a smell fetish. It sounds weird, but most of the monk community will agree with me when I say that this series showcases a great example of a healthy and communicative, communicative, communicative relationship. <laughs> I'm still shocked that I have so many volumes to read. Kodansha has been spitting out a volume once a month. I wish every series had that kind of release schedule. I'm so freaking excited to be hauling the rest of this next Yen Press series, and that's A Bride Story by Ka Kaoru? Kaoru Mori. <laughs> I bought the rest of this historical romance after my husband gifted me the first volume in May. I haven't read the first volume, but my gut is telling me that I'm really going to like this. <laughs> this is about a girl who is sent to a neighboring town in order to marry a boy eight years younger than her. The narrative follows this girl adapting to the new foods, traditions, and clothing of this new community as well as learning more about her new husband. I cannot get over how beautiful 
and detailed this series is and the hardcovers are so stinking pretty. I'm looking forward to binging this and making room for it on my bookshelf. And the last manga I'm hauling today recently debuted in August and that's the seven seas title Skip and Loker by Mizaki Takamatsu. I'm not gonna lie, I bought this manga purely on reviews and cover art. All I know is that this is a slice of life rom-com about a girl who is moving from a small town in Japan to big city Tokyo. There's a certain charm to the art style and when I saw it available through Amazon I immediately snatched it up as it's been out of stock for some time. The reviews for this shoujo title are phenomenal and I can hardly wait to dive in. And that friends is the end of this manga unboxing and haul video. I'm sure some of you have read some of these manga. I'd love to know which ones you've read and what you think of them in the comment section below. If you're interested in more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!